this is Kevin for Pixivert.com. In this video I want to have a look at basic animation in After Effects CS6. If I select all the layers for this project and press U on the keyboard, you'll see that all this animation resolves just to a handful of keyframes in four properties. What I want to do in this video is to show you how I came up with these keyframes. I'm going to start where we started initially, which is at the end. So I'm going to remove these keyframes here. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Now we can remove the remaining keyframes and design ourselves some motion. Now, this is broadly speaking where I want my design to finish. So I will need to add keyframes close to the end of my work area. The keyframes will be for the camera. We want to change the position and direction of the camera from start to finish. I also want the environment layer here to rotate and we want the text to slide out into its final position. Let's start with the simplest thing which is the environment layer. Now let's go right to the end and set the position for the environment layer. The thing that we want to change in the environment is the Y rotation. Now as you can see the finishing rotation for the Y rotation was 280 degrees which is a fairly large transformation from its starting point. So I'm going to keyframe that property and we can go right to the beginning and we can set another keyframe there at zero. Now, as you can see the project is updating. In order to make it a lot easier for me to see what I'm actually doing I'm going to drop down to fast draft mode. I've got all the reflections looking the way that I want them to look. I've got all the materials looking the way th that I want them to look. So we can actually work without any of the material values and just see the, ref the relationship between the different elements. And Fast Draft allows us to do that. So if we now play this, we can't actually see anything because the environment layer is only showing up in reflections. However, we can now move on to the second feature, which is getting the text to unsquish itself. So we'll go right to the end and I want the text to finish unsquishing around here. So we'll go to the text and just open that up and you can see how we arrange that. In the text options there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. We've already looked at geometry and materials. We're now going to look at some of the animation properties. I'm going to go up to this animator. I'm going to delete it. We'll go to this option here called animate and we'll click on the little triangle and what we want to change is the tracking so I'm going to click on that now the tracking is something that we can affect up here as well and I think we did that in a previous video but we can also change it down here inside of the layer itself and keep everything nice and neat so what I'm going to do is to say this is where we want the uh, the animation to end so let's add a keyframe we've got a new animator here which has got the tracking type and the tracking amount. Now the tracking, I'm going to leave it before and after. The amount I'm going to choose, I'm going to increase that from 0 to 37. I think that's where it was at the end. And we are going to keyframe that. Now an important thing to bear in mind is that the tracking can start from different places inside of the text. If we go to this paragraph panel and click on the left paragraph, what you'll find is that the tracking is now starting from the left point. And um, if I move to the beginning, you'll be able to see what I mean. I'm going to go down to the tracking type, tracking amount. And I'm going to reduce that to a negative amount. And I think we can go up to about minus 110. If we now animate this, you can see that the tracking is anchored at the left hand point. But if we choose the center justification, the tracking should shoot out from the central position. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So that's actually the text animation taken care of. The final two things that we need to animate are the camera point of, point of interest and position. I'm just going to close this up and open this up so you can see where those are. Under transform you'll find point of interest and position top two options. I'm going to go right to the end not exactly all the way to the end but about there. That's where I want the camera to stop moving. We're going to keyframe these two properties and then we'll go right to the beginning and you can 
tap C on the keyboard that brings up the camera tool and we can use that just to move around. The camera tool allows us to position the camera using the left, middle and right buttons of a three button mouse. The idea here is to try not to see past the walls that we created in our little 3D space. So I'm going to start moving around as you can see, if I turn around too much, we get some uh, we get some we get some transparency there. Now, in the original design that I did, I wanted the transparency to be visible so that we could actually see the tutorial uh, in the background as part of the intro. I thought that was really cool, and that that actually came out from from the fact that I couldn't make the environmental layer my background, so I decided to switch off the environment layer and I decided after I decide after I did that that it actually worked very well with the bit of transparency in the background but for this particular design we don't want any transparency so I'm going to rotate back to that position we can also move the camera like this and we can zoom in and out like this so I'm just gonna move there move right close to the text shift it more to, to the center just try to rotate stuff around it's pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it and we can just zoom in there so it's not exactly as it was but I think that will more or less do for the time and we can try to animate that as you can see it's not a perfect animation but for the purpose of this demonstration I think it does pretty well okay I'm just gonna go down to the text and make sure that the animation ends a bit sooner We get the text kind of like spilling out over the edge there, but that doesn't worry me. And I just like the way there's a bit of interplay between the camera motion and the text motion. Yeah, it looks a little bit robotic, but that's exactly what I'm looking for in this design. Now, the, the one thing that we can't see is the Y rotation for the uh, environment layer. The Y rotation is down here. Having keyframed it from 0 to 208, that's a huge amount of rotation in just over 3 seconds. And what I want to do is that when the camera stops moving, which is there, I want the rotation to continue. I want the rotation to continue more or less to the end of my work area, which is this area here. So that we continue to see a little bit of a rotation in the reflections uh, in this text here, even after all the other motion has stopped. In order to preview the reflections, we would need to change the resolution. And um, what we can do is to go to the ray traced options and change that maybe down to 3. We could even try 2. Let's try 2 and see what that does. Now, you've also got the anti aliasing filter. This is something that I haven't discussed before. I'll cover the anti aliasing in a different video. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on none and I'm going to hit OK and you might notice that I've kept it on none throughout all my renders and we need to change this to off final quality and we can see what that render is going to look like so that's pretty pretty awesome we're getting a bit of noise in the text because that's such a low render setting but as you can see there the job is done we can see the rotation of the environment layer there we can see the environment layer rotating around quite rapidly and I think After Effects is running out of memory so what I'll do is do a, a render of this I'll do a very low quality render of this uh, and then you can see what this particular animation looks like uh, when it's fully rendered okay so that's gonna be it for this video uh, we'll finish off with a full render but for the next video, I'll probably tackle some of the quality issues that you can look at when you're rendering in After Effects ray traced 3D mode. Thanks for watching. That's all for now. Take care. Till next time. Bye.